Shalom Elohim, Yisrael, Yohanathan, Dawid with you here once again, humbly so, on uh, Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians, on what is now up to episode number 65, the longest series we've ever had, number 65 of the Bemil Atah Shali series, this will be released on March the 3rd, 2024, in the year of their Lord. This one entitled Greatness Through Service. Greatness Through Service. Now what you're looking at is a set of our first exodus when Yahweh created a nation in one day. Birthed us out of a nation from our hardship which is practice for what we had later, slavery. Bondages, this was just practice. But uh, this would, is not the, um, would not be the official Passover set. I just did not want to take it down. Um, I don't have the candles up and I think I want to use a, a different, uh, you can't really see the word pass, Pesach uh, down there that I have. So this is just kind of what you will see, but I'm going to, um, this is not the final official set for Pesach, which... Uh, Pesach 24, how we um, get the date this year. Uh, the next new moon will be on so-called March the 10th at 5 a.m. So then you have you have to look for the Abib. And the Abib is going to be about seven days later. So that'll be about March the 17th. And um, I have a site that I go to of this Jewish uh, site where they look for the Abib in the Holy Land. So we'll go by that. And then we look, once you get the earthly witness, the Abib is the earthly witness. There must be two witnesses at least. Then you look for the full moon, which is the heavenly witness. And that'll be around March the 25th, 3 a.m. Then once you get the heavenly witness of a full moon, because we left Misraim under a full moon, then that means you have your Pesach. Okay, so Pesach is probably around March the 25th at 3 a.m., 3 in the morning. Now, we're talking today about greatness through service. Uh, we're on the last few days of, of Hamashiach's life in the flesh on earth. As he segues from the old covenant to a new world order and his new covenant. Just a review. Once again, last week. Uh, last week's topic was, was they reclined at table. And this is the unveiling of this new world order meal that I call it. Let's just review it again because it is critical. If Yahweh Shul does not sacrifice his life on time then that means he's not who he said he was. And we know he is. So he's established a new world order meal, so I call it, because they had laven bread and they drank wine. No, those two symbols are nowhere found in the first exodus uh, in, 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 the, in the old covenant, when we had the old covenant. And that Passover meal. They did not have laven bread and they did not drink wine. This is why um, John 13, 1, I referenced, said that this meal was the, the day before the festival, day before the feast. John 13, 1 says that this meal was the day before. That's important. And the bread they ate, look, at, look up the, in, your, in your concordance, Greek word number 740 was artos and that is a leavened bread and 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 why is this let's let's go to isaiah 49 1 through 7 i don't know if i read it before but let's read it today isaiah 49 1 through 7 y'all sure being a servant and a light to the gentiles <clears throat> and it reads this is old testament okay so-called old testament Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. 
Yahweh has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. He has hidden me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver. He has hidden me. And he said to me, you are my servant, O Yisrael, whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with Yahweh and my work with my Elohim. And now Yahweh says, who formed me from the womb to be his Eber, his servant, to bring Jacob back to him so that Yisrael is gathered to him because I will be glorious in the eyes of Yahweh. And my mighty one will be my strength. Indeed, this is verse 6. Indeed, he says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant, my Eber, to raise up the tribes of your code. Too small a thing. And to restore the preserved ones of Yisrael. I will also give you as a light to the Goyim, the Gentiles. That you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Question. Where was Yisrael scattered to the ends of the earth? Verse 7. Thus says Yahweh, the Redeemer of Yisrael, the Kodesh One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhor, to the servants and rulers, kings will see and rise, princes will also worship because of Yahweh who was faithful, the Kodesh one of Yisrael, he has chosen you. So there you go. Even in the so-called Old Testament, it has always been planned for this Besor, which you call gospel, to go to everyone. This meal was a new world order. This is why they... Uh, this is what he instituted. This is why they had laven bread and wine. Now, uh, I didn't even bring this this scripture up, and I will today. I I, I just came across it myself a couple days ago, and it's, it's in there. John nineteen thirty one. In John nineteen thirty one, um, this day, uh, the day that Yahweh Shua was going to be strung up, was called a. Uh, uh, the day before that or uh, High Shabbat and if it was a High Shabbat that means it was Abib 14 because we know in Leviticus 23 7 that these appointed feasts some of them are sh the Shabbat there is a Shabbat and we know that Pesach is, is a Shabbat that's in Leviticus 23 7 and there's others, but this is one we're talking about now. So if they wanted to get him down off of the tree before the Shabbat, that means it had to have been Passover coming up. Remember, this is why it's critical that the Passover had to be sacrificed at twilight. We talked about that last week. It must be at twilight. He died, he gave up his soul at 3 p.m. Remember, it was darkness from 12 to 3 in the strength of the sun. And when the sun came back out, that, that three-hour eclipse, they called it, he was dead. So about three, at 3 p.m., about three and a half hours before Passover. That's critical. He could not have been, they would not have tried him all night long at Gethsemane. He got him around 12 o'clock in the morning and then tried him all night and into the morning. They would have done that on actual Passover day. That means all of that had to have happened before Passover day. This is why John 13 1 says this meal was before Passover. And uh, they wanted to get him down off that, all three of them, the two criminals as well, off that tree. Greek word 3904 says is Paraskiue. It was a preparation day or festival. That, that, that means preparation day for the regular weekly Sabbath or a festival. And we know 
Pas Pesach is a festival. And on the and on the high, the King James Version calls it a high Shabbat, high Sabbath. That's when we must have a mikra, which is a called assembly. A mikra, it's a called assembly. So they wanted to get Yahweh down and those two criminals that he hung between before the festival, before the Pesach. This is so, it's right there. Those who are following Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians, now you must know this and share this that it could not have been a Passover meal. That's critical. If it was a Passover meal, Yahweh Shua, then he died uh, too early, one day early. But he died the day after, on time, at three o'clock, between the evenings, at twilight, as ordered. As directed by Yahweh himself. So uh, you go to Exodus 12 and 6 and go to Leviticus 23 and 5 to show that the Pesach must be eaten at twilight. That means by that evening it's already Pesach. They've already eaten. And they had to rush and leave out. And you see them right here and this, this picture I have right here now. Them leaving out and the bread was unlavened because they didn't have time for it to rise. So now let's go to um and that's the one let's just do a few more scriptures on this. This is critical that we talk about this meal and how it's a new world order. That's why I'm spending what this is the fourth week I keep talking about this. Deuteronomy 4. 5 through 8. What we have here is a whole new system of access to Yahweh. This is what this meal was about. Deuteronomy 4, 5 through 8. And it reads, Surely I have taught you statutes and judgments, just as Yahweh my mighty one commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them. Because this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Because what great nation is there that has Elohim so near it as Yahweh, our mighty one, is to us? For whatever reason we may call on him. And what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments? as are in all this law which I set before you this day only take heed before you uh, take heed so there was the whole nation all the world was to see how we conduct ourselves with these laws judgments and statutes in our access to Yahweh we're the only nation that had access to Yahweh. The only nation. I mean, I'm not talking about individual peoples. The only nation. Yahweh said, I've only known you. I've only had a relationship with you. And this is how you access me. And be careful to do it. Now, of course, we failed. This is why Yahweh Shua came and sacrificed himself on an almond tree on the Mount of Olives. So that is the old covenant marker. Compare that to John 13, 34, and 35. And then when you compare compare that to John 13. Thirty-four and thirty-five, Yahweh Shua says, that was Moshe speaking. Now the greater Moshe is speaking here. Yahweh Shua, Bimilata Shali, in his own words, says a new cup, a new commandment. Okay? He sent out his own mouth. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. Under Moshe, he said, everyone will know that Yahweh is Elohim by how we kept those commandments, judgments, and statutes. That's how the whole world would know. And then they would follow our pattern in their access to the Creator. 
Y'all was saying now, so y'all failed in doing that. This is how the whole world is going to know that I am who I am. That you have access through me to get to Yahweh. This is how they're going to know it is by how you love one another. He said that proves that you are my disciplined one, my disciple. That you have love for one another. That's what he says. How can you get that twisted? This is nothing. This has always been planned. Always planned. Jeremiah 31 30. I read that. I'm going to read it again. We're going to go to Jeremiah 31 31 through 35. And this new covenant. This is so called Old Testament. Another witness. Look, the days are coming, says Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant. Yahweh Shua just said that. He just said it. He's the greater Moses. And here's his right here. A new covenant with the Bayad of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Misraim. Right there, you're looking at us being led out of the land of Misraim. And we're going through the sea of reeds right there and he says right here in Jeremiah 31 not according to that okay when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Israel my covenant which they broke we broke it though I was a husband to them says Yahweh but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days after says Yahweh I will put my laws in their minds and then write it on their hearts and I will be their mighty one and they will be my people. No more will every man teach his neighbor, every one to his brother saying, no Yahweh, because they will know me. See, we were, we were supposed to teach the world how to have access to Yahweh through these judgments. That's 666 of them, not 613, but we didn't. And the new covenant it's through Yahshua, Yahweh Shua, by our love for one another and for them. And that teaches them. And that can teach them anyway. It says, they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahweh, because I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. That This is right here in your book. My book, our book, the KJNV. This meal was a new world order of access to the creator to the eternal one Yahweh and if you get it wrong you will be deceived and you will be lost trying to get in with your fig leaves of righteousness instead of taking the linen the linen see fig, le fig leaves is self righteousness but Yahweh clothes his bride in linen wow that's the new covenant, Yisrael. This is what this whole series is about. That's why we it's number 65. We still probably got at least another 10 to go. About another 10 to go, my estimation. Now, for today, I, I, I'm telling you, we, I hope we got this now. I hope we got this. Please like, share, subscribe, share this. Because you, those who follow Yahweh, Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians, understand what the so-called Last Supper was about. A new world order of access to Yahweh. Now, at that table, Luke 22, 24 to 30. <clears throat> We're at Luke 22, 24 to 30. They still haven't learned here. Their master is a few days or well, he's one day away from being strung up. And here they are. And now with this narrative, they're going to argue about who's the greatest among them. Be mindful that this is after they've had their feet washed. And he and he just got finished telling them he's going to be betrayed. And they're leaning, is it I? Is it I? They're heartbroken. I, it's not me, is it? It's not me. And yet, moments later, this shows you how Hasatan is always working. 
He is right there at the table with them. He was right there in Yehuda at the feet washing. Yehuda raised his foot up high to have Yahweh Yeshua wash his feet. Raised his heel against them to have his feet washed. Didn't even uh, pause. Yeah, you go ahead and wash my feet. And now here he is in the, all the disciples getting them to bicker. And here it goes. Now, this is verse 24 of Luke 22. Now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. And he said to them, here we go, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors, but not so among you. On the contrary, he who, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he who it governs as he who serves. Because who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not the one who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. So here we go. Let me go ahead and read the last verse. That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on the thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Wow, that's, this meal right now is a prelude to that meal because there's going to be a select few, 24. This is half of the 24. Shaul is going to be the one to replace Yehuda who are literally going to be at that table, that great welcoming table when Yahweh Shul will indeed raise that cup, that cup of his blood that encompasses all of us and he's going to drink that and we're going to drink it at that table in that great day but look he says <laughs> y'all trying to be the greatest but you're going to do some service and all 11 of them did hard service and then if you include Shaul he did a harder service than them all and boy did they get beat up dragged down ripped out they none of them died with a nice plump uh, retirement package now, Yachanan did live to be in his 90s before he died on that lonely island of Patmos because he survived his torture. But they learned what service was. Yes, at the end, they will be counted amongst the great as they are at the literal table with Yahweh Shua. Them, they, and 12 others. I, I, we'll maybe another time give you who those other 12 are. But to get there, oh boy, did they have to serve. They had, and it is served. And believe it or not, this humble little ministry here is a great taxing service by me to you. But I do it because I love Yahweh Shua and I love you. And Yahweh Shua has anointed me with the chakma, the wisdom, to teach the true knowledge of the Torah. And it is the simplicity of Hamashiach to love him with all your heart, might, and soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. To do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's that simple. See, it's too simple. Don't let your preacher make it complicated. Don't let your rabbi, your father, your pastor, whatever they call themselves, get you twisted and confused, which only causes deception. Here they are, at a, and it's not the European table you see in all your pictures. They're on the floor in a circular pattern with the food on a low table, a circle table on the floor, and you eat like that. So coming in, you don't know who's the greatest. Everyone is equal on a circle table. It is a European Western mindset where you have this rectangle table and you have a head and a foot. And then you have the sides. That is not the Hebraic way of dining. They all were equal at that table. So why are they arguing? And here he is just got finished washing their feet. Here he is just got finished saying I'm going to be betrayed. Wow. And this is Yahweh's elect the greatest. So see how we always fail him? Yet Yahweh Shua is faithful and just. He changes not. Therefore, 
we sons of Jacob are not consumed. The narrative goes on. Let's go to pick it up. This narrative from Mark 14. Mark 14, 27. We're going to read from 27 to 31. This is when Yahweh Shua is going to predict Peter's denial. Okay? Then Yahweh Shua said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. Because it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I had been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Then Selah, whom y'all call Peter, said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not be. Yahweh Shua said to him, oh, Surely I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke more vehemently. If I have to die with you, I will de not deny you. But here's a key. This last part. And they all said likewise. So we're going to stop trying to uh, chastise uh, Selah, whom you'll call Peter, for running his mouth and saying, ah, he's going to go down with him to the grave and die and fight. Because they all agreed and said the same thing all of them so they all are equally guilty in having betrayed and denied and deserted Yahweh Shua HaMashiach all of them Peter was like the one like to be so quick to speak at the mouth so then we're going to pick up this narrative going to John 14 1 to 14 We are reading from John 14, 1 to 14. Yahweh Shua says that he is the way, the truth, and light. This is Yahweh Shua speaking. And we're still at this table. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many nations. If it were not so, many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive unto myself. There where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Said Didymus Thomas, said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. Now, how can we know the way? And Yahushua said to him, I am the way, the emet, and the chai, the way and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. This is a new world order, Yisrael. Prior to this, under the laws of Moshe, you got to Yahweh through 666 laws, commandments, judgments, and statutes. That's how you got to Yahweh. Formerly, as a nation, as a people, and now we all woke up, we call it, and we are a nation and all this kind of stuff. Well, Yahweh Shua said out of his own mouth, Shali in his own mouth, no one comes to the Father. Ab, not Abba. Abba is Greek. No one comes to Ab except through me. If you want to get to now, you can't get to Yahweh without Yahweh Shua, but then that's judgment. Good luck withstanding Yahweh's judgment. Good luck. I think you better go ahead and take the mercy seat. Take Yahweh Shua and let Yahweh go through Yahweh Shua. Let, let, let him do it. Let him filter out your filthiness. Don't say that's okay, Yahweh Shua. I, I want to go to Yahweh myself. Don't do that. Because you will burn up. The narrative continues. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. See, they still don't get it. They still argue about who's the greatest. They still don't. The ears not hearing his words. Y'all should said to him, "Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? That the words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority." But the Father who lives in me does the works. 
Believe me that I am the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. And this is what the scribes and Pharisees, the lawyers, and the elders of our, of our people refuse to do. They at least acknowledge that, that this man is doing wonderful and marvelous works. I mean, he healed the sick, he cast out demons, he gave sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, he re made limbs recover, and he raised the dead. And they still refuse to acknowledge this man for who he said he was. And here they are with him, his understudies, his apprentices, for three years, and still not getting that this man is the very essence of the Creator. So, this Yahweh says that he is the revelation of Yah. And then, what's supposed to happen is, we are the revelation of Yahweh Shua. That's what's supposed to happen if you get this. If you have the wisdom to get this, you are living, walking, and breathing revelation of Yahweh Shua. As such, you get your neighbor's eyes to turn to Yahweh. The old covenant door is can only be opened by Yahweh Shua. Yahweh Shua is the only one to live a perfect life in the flesh. As such, he was able to open up that door of 666 commandments and get to Yahweh. He opened the door that was the barrier. We could not open up that door because we sinned. That's why they had to keep on having atonement every year. Yahweh Shua, who's on the other side of that door, he opened that old covenant door. Now he is revealed. We see him. Now he says, I am the door. Yahweh Shua literally says he's the door. So now we go through him as the door. And on the other side of him is Yahweh, eternal life. You see that? Behind the door, the veil of Moshe, we could not open, we could not access that in our impurity. Yahweh Shua rips it open, he rips it open and reveals himself. Then we, aha, what? We accept him, we receive him, we love him, we take him, we relate with him. And we go through him, and on the other side of him is his father. It's that simple, Yisrael. He is the revelation of Yahweh. We are the revelation of him. Hallelujah, 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 Yahweh. And he says greater works than what he has done, we will do. How can that be? Because he goes to the father. Yahweh sure became a man like us, flesh and blood. He was one man in one place at one time. Now, we are his children. We are the fruits of his seed. He is on the right hand of his father waiting for the next step, that last great day. And we are down here all over the four corners of the earth. So we're doing great at worst because we're all over the whole earth. I'm reaching more people than he has physically when he was here for those three years because this goes through the whole world. Y'all, for Hebrews and Christians, I, we get... A hits from the whole world. So, the, in that manner do we do greater works. As a body, as a collective, not individually. When was the last time you raised somebody from the dead? But as a collective, we're doing greater because this word goes out to the whole world. We're going to... Uh, uh, let's pick up the narrative on John 14. Let's go to verses 15 to 31. Okay, of John 14. This is the promise, okay? He gives us. If you love me, keep my misfolk, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Okay? So he's going to give us another helper because Yahweh Shua is not going to be here. He's here in us. He's not down here physically anymore. He's here in us. Here's verse 17. The Ruach of Emet, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him because he lives in you and will be in you. 
and I will leave you, I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. There you go. It's that simple. Now that comes out on Shavuot. That Ruach to each one of us, to all of us. So he is still here, but in us, through us. We are the revelation of Yahweh Shua. We are the face of Yahweh Shua. Oh, it's so simple. How can anyone not get it? It's so simple. He says it right here in his own words. Continue verse 19. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. And this is something that the world can understand. If you don't understand this, then what you're saying is you align yourself with the world. Because they don't understand this kind of peace, this kind of revelation. And that that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments, my misfits, which is to love me and love Yahweh, love your neighbor as yourself, the golden rule, and keeps them, is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. You can't, Yahweh ain't loving nothing that don't come through his son. That's what he says. You want the love of Yahweh? Come through his son. We abide in him, he abides in us, he presents us to his father. You can't get in any other kind of way. You cannot do it. So then Yehuda, not Yehuda Iscariot, said to him, Master, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Now, in a kind of way, that's a good question. How do you manifest yourself not to the world? That's kind of a good question. Yahshua answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, my debarim. And my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the words which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. So, Yahweh, now this is, he's actually saying his father is going to abide with us also. So this is how he reveals himself to us and not the world. Those who receive his word is who he reveals himself to. So that question that Yehuda asked was a good question. How can you be revealed across the four corners of the earth but not the world understand it? Because he's not going to abide with them. They can, they, like he says, they have ears, but don't hear. Eyes, but don't see. But those who receive this revelation of this word I'm giving to you this day and have been given to you in now 65 segments, segments of this series, understand it. You under, understand the ruach of this word. Everyone can open up the Bible and read it, but only those who receive the love of Yahweh Shua can receive it and understand it and get the hakma, the wisdom. We are commanded in Revelations to understand this. Because if you understand it, you cannot be deceived in that last great day. And it is upon us now, even now, the deception is upon us. And I read on, picking up on verse 25. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. That means he's not present with us now. We are his presence. But the helper, the Ruach HaKodesh, see, Ruach HaKodesh, that's who the helper is. And if he dwells in you, you understand the simplicity of the Besorah, what they call gospel. Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring your remembrance of all things that I said to you. Shalom I leave with you, my shalom I give to you. Not as the world gives to you do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you will rejoice because I said I am going to my father. Because my father is greater than I. Yahweh Shua says the father is greater than I. Remember, in Corinthians Everything is under, laid under Yahweh's Shua's feet. Then Yahweh's Shua lays everything under Yahweh's feet. And then heaven and earth and all is one. And all is one together. Yahweh is the head. The ultimate head. Verse 29. And now I have told you before it comes. That when it does come to pass. You may believe. 
I will no longer walk, talk much with you because the ruler of this world is coming. So there is a ruler of this world and it is not Yahweh Shui. It is the accuser Hasatan. He is the ruler of the world. Yahweh Shua said it in his own mouth. Now he cannot, he's not the ruler of the individual souls. He is the ruler of those souls who do not accept Yahweh Shua. He is the ruler of the world and those who do not accept Yahweh Shua. So he says the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. So if you have Yahweh Shua in you, you do not have the ruler of this world in you. They both cannot be in the same house. Yahweh Shua binds a strong, breaks in the door, binds a strong man and casts him out. Well, actually, he binds them up and he brings us out. And we abide with him. Verse 31. But that world may know, but that the world may know that I have loved the Father and the Father gave me commandments, so I do. Arise, let us go from here. So he's saying, he finished all this talking. <laughs> it's time to go. All this, we love uh, the way Yachanan, his narrative is, is different. And we did not do a whole lot of quoting in this series from Yachanan until this last week, this so-called Passion Week, is when we lean heavily on Yachanan because we get more insights as to what happened at that table, at this New World Order meal. We get most of our insights through the narrative of Yachanan than we do with the other three narratives. So that from that, they leave from there because we know from there, that's when they went to Garden of Gethsemane. And they went there around nine, got there around nine o'clock and they had three hours of prayer before the betrayal. Let's uh, go to Luke 22 though. Okay, we're gonna go to Luke 22. <laughs> Praise Yah. Verses 35 through 38. Luke 22, 35 through 38. Uh, this is they, they're going to head out to Gethsemane now, right? But this is what he says as they before they head out. When I sent you without money bags, knapsacks, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. Then he said to them, "But now, he who has a money bag, let him take it, and likewise a knapsack. And he who has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Because I say to you that this which is written must still be accomplished in me." And he was numbered with the transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. So they said, Master, look, here are two swords. He said, it is enough. And from that point, that's when they go out to the to Garden of Gethsemane. Now, in verse 35, remember he sent them out and they cast out demons and all that. He didn't send them out with anything. But now here today, he's saying, in this later days, you're going to have to get your affairs in order. We have people in our families, our loved ones, who are not, you know, following at that time. Who knows what's going to happen at the end? But we need to get our legal affairs in order right now, Yisrael. Not for our sake, but for others. Whatever kind of, whatever you have left for your children or your parents or even your spouses. Get your legal matters in order, your affairs in order right now. That's what he says in Luke 22, 35. Then in 36, <laughs> he says, hey, you're going to need to gird yourself with a weapon. Because we know they're going to be trying to, there's going to be a purge out here. There's going to be a legal purge by this wicked government to kill everything. And if y'all don't cut those days short, no flesh will survive. Now, if you go to verse uh, 38, Skip in verse 37. He's saying that the two weapons are enough. In other words, do not amass yourself some great arsenal. I had a had a friend and I kind of I disassociated myself from him. Who had walls and walls of weapons. Every wall is filled. He had them hung up on the walls of all kinds of weapons. Yahweh Shu is not saying that. He's saying one if you have one one sidearm, that's enough. That's all you need is one. And what is, what is, who used it? Peter. He whipped that weapon out. He was good with it. He cut that soldier's ear off. 
That's how precise he was. Ready. So that's what Yahweh Shua says. Is that, you know, get yourself ready. Because a time is coming. His time, his role at this time is coming to an end. Let's have that final scripture. This, he quoted Isaiah 53 and 12. That was a quote from Isaiah 53 and 12. I want to read that one. When he said that his time, his time on this earth is coming to an end, or his role is coming to his time is coming to an end, he was quoting Isaiah 53:12. We know that whole narrative is the suffering Messiah. He says, "Therefore I will divide him in portion with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death." He was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the intercessors. So that's what Yahweh Shua did. He's going to, we know he's great go out to God of Gethsemane now, be betrayed. He's going to be beaten all night long and mocked. And he's going to be strung up and stoned on top of that, bearing our transgressions. The last verse says, and made intercession for the transgressors. He's our intercessor. So we go through him. This is the new covenant. This is right here in Yeshua, Isaiah. The new covenant. The new world order. For the last 2,000 plus years, Yisrael, is been to receive, accept Yahweh and HaMashiach. And I say this strongly over and over again to you new brews waking up because you got smartphones now and the internet. I've been around for over two scores in this. I got about 45 years in this. Yahweh has blessed me and anointed me to teach this. You are not to wake up and start bashing people upside the head with 600 plus commandments that we got in our desert of disobedience. You're looking at that right there, that exodus right there. Coming out and going to the desert. And we like walking through the woods and briar bush uh, stickies hanging on to our legs as we walk. The more we walk, the more briar stickies stick to our legs. That's what we did for 40 years, going through the desert, getting more and more commandments. And showing more and more disobedience with them. Do not wake up and beat your wife upside the head and, and try to uh, force her to live by what you just learned yourself and you don't even know what you're learning do not try to uh, uh, chastise your children you need to come in meek and humble that they catch up to where you are look where you was just last year last two years last five years last ten years since you got a smartphone since the internet you just woke up your so called woke up yourself have mercy and patience on those who are not there. Look where you was. Just finished keeping Christmas and Easter and eating pork, whatever. So we're going to continue with this series because uh, now we're going to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is happening. We're getting down to the end, Yisrael. Please share, support, like, subscribe. To Yahweh for Hebrews and Christians. Shalom Alekim. Peace be on you.